people think that there's just this one Native American, this one group. And we still get those questions, you know, do you speak Native American? And they're like, Jesus. My name is Simon Moya Smith. I'm of Lala Lakota and Chicano. My mom's from East Los Angeles, and my dad is from the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. Some things I write are pretty aggressive, and not everybody likes my writing style. They don't like that I cuss left and right. Simon, the question back to you, this interplay between objectivity and accuracy. Well, I wouldn't say I'm an objective writer if anybody's read my stuff. I think a good journalist is somebody who is A, uh, diligent. B, you, get your, you check your facts, but also C, you push back against the narrative. We have to look at the American narrative, the white narrative, as it, as, as it reads right now, and what has been decided is what is objective. And I think it is incumbent upon the conscientious objector, and especially the, the writer of color, the, the ethnic minority, to push back against the American narrative. And if they don't think it's objective, then that's their problem. We're following the facts, too. We have to do our due diligence because of that. People want to aggressively deny that the United States you know, committed genocide against indigenous peoples. Well, and you provide them the information. So when I get to write columns for CNN, you know, it's a broader spectrum. People understand certain things that Black Friday is actually Native American Heritage Day, and people don't know that. Now you have the Native American voice in your pocket. Literally, you can look at your phone and see us responding to something in real time. That's what actually brought the New York Times and MSNBC and CNN, because they couldn't deny what exactly was happening. They couldn't deny the footage of dogs being released on indigenous people and water protectors. This was a way for the indigenous community and those of the non-indigenous community to take control of the narrative. And that's what we even try to do, not only if you're a water protector like Tara House got the front lines, but being me in a newsroom trying to not uh, change the narrative, but to correct it. When I come in, they know I'm not there to take. I'm not there to just like open your wounds about maybe a death in the family, maybe it was a drug overdose, or maybe there was sexual abuse, and I take the juicy story and then I run away. I don't do that, I don't just take away. I'm a part of the community, I'm as, a, as, a, as a native man, as an indigenous man. They know I'm not there to harm them, they know I'm there to tell their story and give them the opportunity to speak up, uh, you know, on behalf of their community and themselves. This is still a very old colony, and you kind of think people could justify it all they want. They could try to say, you know, that their, their family came here the legal way. What was the legal way? Rape? Murder? Theft? Aggressive removal? That's not the legal way. I think they need to recognize that here in the district of Christopher Columbus, where the Washington football team's mascot means proof of Indian kill, while at the same time Native Americans are more likely to die at the hands of cops. And you know, you just see all those pieces coming together. And I think if we can get people to connect the dots, I think we'll be involved in more discussions about discrimination. And um, that day hasn't come yet, but we're pushing for it.